Welcome back. So starting out the week, I was taking on the task of removing um, 20 or so pins from this 37 pin connector for the pressurization controller. And as you may recall, that was because I damaged one of the sockets when I was trying to um, pull one of the pins out um, for the, the manual override uh, jumper that I had in there. Uh, which I didn't believe needed to be jumped and I wanted to have it so it was switchable, but unfortunately I was wrong And so in pulling that out I ended up damaging it so I had to get the new connector So anyway got the new connector in and um, I started pulling out all the old pins and moving them over to uh, the new connector and Then I looked at the back shell which is the thing that screws on to the back of this connector and realized that it wasn't exactly the same thread um, coarseness is what the other one was what the old one was so needless to say had to order a new one and so that project is now on hold because you can't put that in there without the right back shell initially and then uh, over to uh, the fuel flow so when I ran the engine there last week the fuel flow was showing uh, negative and I suspected that uh, when Dan had wired this up at the, at the end that he had maybe switched the two wires around um, for the each of the things so I just basically switched them there at that connector and uh, Just ran the fuel pump and sure enough um, as you can see here when I run the fuel pump now So there's the gallons per hour there in the middle and sorry for the blurriness there my camera or My phone doesn't focus so good close up sometimes um, There's the fuel pump there that one boost pump So I'll run that and I'll turn that on while you're looking at this and you'll be able to see how it uh, goes up so here we go, there you can see, jumping up, that's just with the fuel from the boost pump running through there. And the uh, same reading comes out uh, still on the um, MoTeC ECU, so that's good, so both um, things are showing the same value. And uh, here's Jeff getting ready to um, prime these uh, ailerons again. After all the uh, closeout and everything's done, and the you know that spade was put in there and everything like that, he's just you know, wanting to make them look nice again. So we're just getting those uh, last little bit of sanding and then uh, masked masked off, um, so they can be primed. And here's Devin working on the other one, just getting that all masked off. Uh, so not far away from uh, having everything to do with the wings done uh, now that they're closed out. Jeff just has to do a layup there on where the rudders attach to beef up that edge uh, for where the hinges are going to attach. Other than that, the wings are pretty much done now. So here he is uh, just squirting the, with some uh, primer just to make them look sort of presentable. And uh, still got the same sort of stuff to do on the fuselage, all the seams around where we joined the upper and lower halves and all the places that we've done sort of, you know, modifications and stuff need to be body worked and then ultimately primed again but th here's how these two looked out a look out and uh, it was a little bit cold there and we had to have some ventilation in there after Jeff was spraying so we ended up with not not a very perfect finish on those with the paint but you know unfortunately we don't have a paint booth and that's just what it is so here uh, Jeff's preparing to put the wings back on in order to bond the last of the bushings in and what he's done here is just trimmed off that edge there for the lower skin because um, that wasn't actually bonded in the last time that we had the wings on so he's um, brought that back so it's not going to interfere with the uh, lower skin of the strake and we'll get those wings on soon and uh, these are a couple of the push rods there uh, for the door actuators and they you know all of them I had had these uh, little um, you know flexible ends on there but this particular one I wanted to change it out to um, a fork end and that's because uh, the door trim goes there right where you see the paint change and uh, if it had the regular rod end on it then um, it would have been sort of sitting too high and the door trim wouldn't sit down so that's why I had to change this out and uh, put that fork on there and that means it just sort of sits in uh, much closer to the frame there than it would with the regular sort of rod end so much more low profile there you can see I'm sort of showing how it would sit but anyway you'll see that later on when the door trims come back so that with that right end there it would have been too high and with this um, fork end it's lower and it'll just be a, a much better fit where the door trim uh, goes over that so here are those two connectors I was telling you about this is the old one 
and uh, with the back shell on it and this is a new one without the back shell and I just figured oh well I thought I was buying it from the same place and maybe I didn't or maybe I got a slight different variation and I'm just realizing now you can't uh, unscrew that with one hand because the center bit's rotating so I won't try and complete that but anyway needless to say that back shell there on the left side one that won't go on the right side one so I've ordered the new one and I've just got to wait for that to come in and uh, in the meantime it's just a bunch of uh, wires sitting out there with all of the pins on them already that need to be put back in there as I said you've got to feed the wires through first before you start putting them into the connector so I can't do anything until I get that back shell and that won't be until the end of the week or next week and uh, meantime I'm actually getting ready to take the engine off now so I'm starting to um, prep everything that needs to be disconnected and here's me filming it with my phone so I know where all the um, connectors or you know remember where all the connectors go for the wiring harness and I've taken off enough times I should know but it's always good to have a backup um, so anyway there's uh, quite a bit of work to do just to get this thing uh, ready to take off and uh, in the meantime you know we're going to be putting the wings on and the cowling on beforehand making sure that's all fitting finally and getting all the clecos and st or not the clecos but the nut plates and stuff done and you can see Devin here has been uh, doing the nut plate holes and stuff for the upper skin of the wing and then once we've had the wings on again we drill the bottom holes um, we can put the nut plates on for those where they meet up with the cowling and uh, so here you can see I've got the wiring harness pretty much uh, disconnected from everything there and uh, there's a few other hoses and lines and fuel lines and things like that that need to be disconnected before we pull it off and uh, we've got a forklift this time that we're going to use to lift the engine off and I'm not sure if it'll be uh, this week it'll depend on how long uh, it takes Jeff to get the cowling all finished fitted and uh, in the meantime uh, I've got these rods uh, connected there now I figured I may as well put them on board so they're in and uh, the next thing is to get the doors on again do a final fitment and connect, reconnect all the uh, actuators for all the rods and just make sure everything's working smoothly before we ultimately take the doors off again before transport up to the airport and here I've got the intake tray back on in place uh, ready for the cowling uh, so we can you know make sure that all fits and while Jeff was doing the final preps before putting uh, the wings back on I figured I'd get this little job out of the way so these are these little clips that uh, go on the uh, turnbuckles there for the aileron cables and uh, you see I've already got that one in there and the one on the other side there they basically just stop the turnbuckle um, from moving once it's been adjusted and here you can see I've sort of half got this one in there you just sort of slide this pin in underneath um, that center brass section there and then just put the other end through the hole there and it stops it from turning and uh, so you can see Jeff's bonded these uh, the bushings in these ones that hadn't been bonded in before because uh, we we're waiting for the final fitment of the wings and uh, so they just have some high sole holding them in place and that one there had been bonded before but the matching one on the wing hadn't been bonded yet so uh, here we are actually got the wing sitting on uh, there's the left wing sitting on the drums on some foam and uh, Jeff's just getting um, that last bushing bonded into place on the wing and uh, then we snug the wing in, up into place and put the bolts through there and uh, let that uh, high sole set up on each of those things overnight and then, then the bushings are all nicely sort of bonded in and aligned so um, then t tomorrow Jeff can work on uh, getting that cowling, the last fitment done on that um, and you know drill all the last set of holes for the lower skins because remember before last time we had the wings on the lower skins weren't bonded on we had sort of clicked them into place but um, you know you need to make sure that they're bonded on before you start drilling holes that match up uh, with the lower cowling so uh, there you can see just basically slide that into place a little bit of alignment and put the bolts in didn't take that long actually and the bolts sort of slid in nicely and um, away you go and then uh, we're on to the other wing so same type of deal there just uh, I'll put the camera along there for a ride so you can see it and so uh, yeah the wings uh, weighed in as you saw last time at 169 pounds with everything on them which is not bad considering you know we had to put those um, the spades on the ailerons to balance them which had some extra weight and there's all this extra weight in these bars 
that are in the uh, leading edges as well to balance the ailerons. So overall, the, I was expecting uh, the wings to come in at over 200 pounds each with everything, um, but being 169 was actually a plus, um, a plus that it was a minus. But as you're going to see a little bit later on, we're definitely overweight for what we want to be, but that's um, a lot in part you know, due to uh, all the different things that I put in there, like in the engine compartment, things that we're just trying out, experimenting with. You know, we have a heat exchanger which has you know, got copper core in it, which is very heavy. And again, that's just an experimentation for um, warming the tanks. But we also have uh, two intercoolers as well, an air-to-air -air and a water-to-air. And the water-to-air is running the fuel through it. Um, so all these things kind of add up. And uh, here you can see we've got everything basically on or balanced on or what on for basically the aircraft. And it's sitting on the scales that we have. And we've got some automotive scales that weigh everything up. And uh, so ultimately, uh, once we weighed everything up, we are at 2,900 pounds just over that. And that includes the parachute, which is 60 pounds. And all that other stuff we put in there, like the adjustable rudder pedals and the air conditioning system and condenser compressor all that stuff so it does add up and uh, it's you know it's 200 pounds more than what i thought it was going to be um, but again all that uh, all those features cost weight and uh, subsequently you know we're just going to have to figure out what we need in the end and the cg is pretty close to where it needs to be we might have to put a little bit more or move a little bit more weight uh, up into the nose which is not a big deal because um, i can actually put a larger battery up in there which would be a plus for us uh, anyway we'll address that later on but ultimately really what it comes down to is um, does the engine have enough power the engine and prop have enough power to propel this thing um, enough and we'll find out when we get it up to the airport soon enough and we can do some high-speed uh, taxiing so uh, but still even right now we have a better power to weight ratio than a Cessna 340 say for example so I'm feeling confident that we're gonna uh, get the performance that we're looking for anyway that's our update for the first half of this week and uh, this weekend's update will be super lightweight because i'm going to be spending uh, most of thursday and friday um, relocating uh, some of our um, tooling to a new storage location so that's our update and thanks again for watching